So we're calibrating this Great Plains drill on the left side of the drill. You got your small seed box and your big seeds. So front, back seeder, um, the right side of the drill is the fluffy seed box. That's for native seeding. So we're gonna do a little, little math right now. We're gonna calibrate it. We need to do 41 cranks out of these three tubes. Seed will come down, we will weigh the seed, and we'll do some math. I'll show you the formula here soon. So 41 cranks. Shake our tubes, make sure we got all the seed out. Okay. So here's our seed down in here. 41 cranks out of three tubes. This is probably not how most people do it, but that's how we're doing it today. All right, we got 0.5 on the dot. Okay, dump this back in here. I'm not gonna come back with this box. So 0.17, so that weighed uh, 0.33. Elementary mass still serving me. Alright. So we're gonna take 0.33, we'll divide it <clears throat> by three tubes, so 0.11, so each, each tube is putting out 0.11 pounds, times it by 10, because it's actually supposed to be 411 cranks, but we divided it by 10, that way we don't have to do so many cranks. So times 10, we've got 1.1 pounds, We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 tubes. So we're going to times that by 15. And that's how many pounds we're putting out per acre. So we're shooting for 20 pounds with this plot screen. I'm going to move it more to the left here. This is my pounds per acre setting here. This is what affects your small seed box. So we're 84 right now. Put it up to... Try 95, that should be about right. This sorghum seed's a little bigger, so you could darn near almost go in the big big seed box. So let's try that again. And you just keep doing this until you finally hit your mark. Whatever poundage you have. Make sure all of our seeds out. That's 0.4. Since last time we had 0.33. Back to the math. So 0.4 divided by three tubes. So it's 0.13. And we times it by 10 and times it by 15. Oops. Okay, we're 20 on the dot. So we've hit our mark. Now one thing that I do is I'll find, this is 95. 95 was the correct setting here. So I'm, I've got a book where I can go in, if I use this exact seed mixture again, I know exactly what to put my drill at if I'm using a Great Plains drill. This is a Great Plains 10-06 NT. Put our seed back in. Good to go. This is a mixture of a bunch of different hybrid sorghums. I'm not exactly sure how many are in here, but this stuff gets 8 to uh, 12 feet. If you fertilize it, it can get even taller. So we've got a rain coming tomorrow. We've got a couple interesting things that we're going to do. Maybe we can give you guys a couple ideas of what to do on your farm if you have um, the tools to make plot screen. You don't have to drill it. Most people actually broadcast it. They work the dirt and then they come in, broadcast it, work the dirt again to get that seed to soil contact. This needs to be a 
quarter inch to a half inch in the soil. So we've got that dirt already worked today. We'll go up here and we'll show you guys a couple plots and a couple strategies that we use plot screen for to pinch deer down closer to the tree. Hop in the old case and roll. We just finished up two seedings for uh, this plot screen. Like I said, um, just a mixed variety of sorghum. Came in here, quarter inch, half inch seed depth. We've got it drilled. And earlier, I failed to mention, I didn't want to hit 20 pounds um, to the acre. I'm trying to hit 10. So I want to do two passes with this. I want 10 pounds to the acre. So that 95 reading that we got, I just divided it by two. I'm sitting at like right, at about like 48 or something like that right now. So we're shooting for 10 pounds an acre because I want to get two passes in. And the reason I'm doing two passes is you want these seeds kind of tight together. You want them leaning on each other, so to say. You want them to almost grow together with each other. So the plan for the first one is just, so we're fencing it from the road, but this plan, we came in here today and I ripped this soil up. We're gonna have beans right here, turnips down below it. But there's a tree right here that we need to hang a stand in. And in past years when Lee's hunting here, he's always saying that the deer cross on the south um, end of the plot. So we wanna try and find a way to pinch them closer to the plot. So we're gonna let this supporting wall grow up eight to 10 foot tall. So it's a barrier that, the, and it's gonna be so thick that these deer aren't gonna to wanna to walk through it necessarily. So if we mow 20 yards to 30 yards, whatever shot you're comfortable with, we're gonna mow that supporting wall and that's gonna create an opening. It's gonna create a pinch point and a funnel for these deer to navigate to the east side of the plot from the west side of the plot. If November, October, I mean, that should just be a great either entrance to the plot or just a funnel going through it. And it's gonna be a nice 20, 30 yard pop shot right by the, right by the stand, so. Just looking at the depth, um, we put our coulters all the way up. There's some seeds that are right on, on the ground, not a huge deal, but when you open this row up, our seeds are just under that soil, which is perfect. You know. I, to make this even better, I might even culti pack it, but it looks really good. This, there's no need to. So we've got a few more spots to finish up, but hopefully that's a tip for you guys. Um, maybe you are have a big food plot and you have a same scenario like this where you just want to pinch deer down to the tree. You can either use a scrape post, which is right here, um, 20 yards from the tree as well, or maybe you do a supporting wall and cut an opening on the side of the tree where your wind is best or most favorable for this plot, for hunting this plot. You do that, you're gonna pinch deer down however close you want. So hopefully that tip helped you guys. And then tomorrow, I've been getting a bunch of questions um, from guys saying, when do you decide to start hunting mornings versus evenings or both? And um, I've just been hunting these my one spot so hard and I just feel like I've been over pressuring it. So I kind of want to dive into that on how I hunted Hog Jr. last year and kind of break it down with you guys, how I use the trail camera pictures, um, weather app, Onyx, to decide my stand location, so, and where I would hunt that day, so. We'll dive into that tomorrow. It's really hot out here. <laughs> Shay's, <laughs> Shay's ready to get back into the AC and so am I, so. We're gonna balance, I got some stuff to finish. I'm gonna get back in the nice AC in this case tractor, finish up a day's work. <laughs> we'll see you guys later.